Hey, I thought I would do a little video of the uh, terrain that I used for our last session. I kind of run through it and uh, tell everybody how it was made or where I got it. Uh, we'll start in the beginning. So all this stuff here you see here is just um, insulation foam that I carved up. So this is two inch insulation foam and I just carved these patterns to make these columns. Uh, insulation foam, this was actually going to be a different project up until very recently. And then I decided that project wasn't going the way I liked it, which happens with projects. And uh, decided to change it into some homemade uh, rock cavern stuff. So it's just layered insulation foam, one inch stuff. And I carved the side up with a, a utility knife, painted it. All done with craft paint. Um, pretty simple. Probably the most tedious part of the whole thing was actually base coating it black, trying to make sure every part of the foam is covered because there's always, you always find a piece of a spot where you missed. It's just inevitable. Uh, more, uh, just more of these columns, made a bunch of different ones, um, different heights, different steps. I have more of them. I just didn't need them all for this build. This was a really fun, if you watch the recap, this was actually a really fun encounter. It was way more stressful than I had thought it was going to be. Uh, miniatures, real quick, these, uh, I did another video about all these miniatures. This is a dark sword miniature that I was using for Brea, uh, Barry's henchman, henchwoman. Um, I have another one for her, but I've actually misplaced it and have no idea where it is, which kind of makes me angry at myself. Um, but this is... Uh, it's actually a modified frost grave miniature I made, put together. Uh, I have another miniature for it, that's for Ronan. And I have another miniature for him, and uh, uh, Steve, who plays him, actually has a Hero Forge miniature that's really cool. I need to get a copy of that file so I can have my own copy of it. And my modified Reaper miniature for my son's character, Lork, the Half-Orc Ranger. Um, over on this side, Move some of this stuff so I don't have to walk around the table. Um, over on this side, this thing, this is a bunch of stuff. Uh, the base, I've had this uh, base, the base again, insulation foam. Uh, just It was actually a lot of scrap pieces that I just kind of put together. I needed this, like a cavern, uh, stipe, cavern style room. And I threw these pieces together. They have some sand and stuff. It's been glued down on top of them and all painted. I've added paint to this. I give it some purple tones for an encounter. And it kind of fit for the Underdark anyway. Um, these, all these mushrooms are from, whoop, Jesus, are from printable scenery. And they're a little top heavy sometimes, actually. If I was to do this project again, I would probably put some sort of weight in the bottom of this, like a big bolt or something, drill a hole in that, put a big bolt in there, give them some weight on the bottom. I probably could still do it, but it might mess it up, so I'll leave them as it is. Um, all from Printable scenery, scenery, one of their projects, uh, something about Grotto. I don't remember the exact name of it, but if you look up on Printable Scenery, you'll find these things. I, I saw these, and I thought they were super cool, so I ordered them from a shop off Etsy called Dungeon Artifacts, and I bought a ton of stuff off of them, probably enough to buy a dozen of my own 3D printers. Um, they do a really good job of printing. Uh, usually, they're one of my two go-to shops. Uh, for terrain, I go to um, uh, Dungeon Artifacts most of the time because he does a really good job. And then for miniatures, different miniatures, Barthol Marvels is my one of my favorite shops on uh, Etsy. I bought a lot of shit uh, stuff from uh, uh, Lance and Kendra, and they do really great work as well. Uh, miniatures in here. Uh, these are just two old Whiz Kids Hook Horror miniatures. Um, had these. I got a couple. I have the new one. I just haven't painted it yet. And I have the Reaper version. I haven't painted that yet either. I had these on hand. And I never used them. Really cool because uh, in all the time, nearly well, 40 years of gaming, I never used Hook Horrors before. And my players had never seen them either. They knew what they were, but they had never actually fought them. Um, these are the new... Whiz Kids uh, Shrieker miniatures, which were a great like last minute find uh, before I ran this session because I didn't have Shriekers and I kind of wanted to use them. And I, I'm a stickler about 
in the games I run, not games I play in, but I like to have the actual miniature if I put it on the table. Um, if I play in other people's games, I do not care what they use for miniatures, but for me, I like to have the actual miniature. And it also came with these other ones. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. These ones here, and these are the violet fungus or something like that. Uh, these can actually attack. I didn't actually end up, I put these in here. These were actually going to be part of the encounter. And I kind of figured once we got going that the hook horrors were enough. So I didn't end up actually using these and they just became kind of more fungus decoration. Um, my players, one of my players, my son, asked me what they were and I, I didn't go into it with them. I just said they're part of the, the core and uh, they just went with that. But they're actually a, a creature you can use. Um... Yeah, and that was it for this counter. More insulation, just old pieces. This was kind of a fun project because I got to dust off a lot of old stuff that I made a long time ago. And uh, I finally get to use it. I built these things, man, a long time ago. They got to be over a year or two old. And I actually finished some that I had started and never completed. So, And I finally got to use them in the game. And they were a lot of fun. And, um, they were worth making. Um, so over here, this monstrosity uh, was at one time one piece and this was made for something else that I was going to do and then COVID hit and I didn't get to do it and it's been sitting in my basement taking up a lot of space and I kind of wanted to either do something with it so I wasn't sure what and I've had the idea of cutting it like I did anyway and using this side as maybe as a backdrop for like photographs of miniatures and stuff like that um, but then when I was thinking of this encounter, I was like, oh, this would be really cool. So I decided to finally cut it and I had, so this is all just insulation foam. Uh, the rocks, I don't know if you'll be able to see them that well, like the rock faces, these are actually cast, um, from different molds that I have, um, uh, primarily woodland scenic molds. Uh, they make really great realistic rock molds and, uh, they're wicked cheap too. You can get them on Amazon for I mean, like ten dollars or something they're not a lot of money um two inch insulation foam for the base just craft paint to uh color it and work pretty good Th this thing here is uh is a four of them they're dwarven forge terrain trays those trays are really nice i started getting them a while ago and i have a decent collection of them i'd like to get more of them when and if they ever have stuff in stock at dwarven forge um they're really good, and the, just the whole thing is very vivid. It's, they're really, really nice, and they're metal, so like the Dwarven Forge stuff has magnets in it, the newer stuff, and you can magnetize builds to them. makes it easy, especially if you have to transport your builds. I started doing that when I run games at uh, my local game store, and it made my life a little bit easier. The bridge, that's a Dwarven Forge. That's from the Dungeons of Doom. That's a really cool bridge. You can actually... Take this middle piece out, make it shorter if you want. You could add more of those middle pieces if you have them and make a really cool bridge. It fit that perfect. I was actually going to use the WizKids bridge I have, but it was actually it was too big. So the old standby was the Dwarven Forge bridge, and I've used those a lot, and they work really well. Um, these pieces, also not. I don't think these are printable scenery. I think there's something else. Endless Sky or something uh again got these through dungeon uh, artifacts on etsy i actually bought two sets of them i just used these three but i have more of them all painted and ready to roll uh really nice a cool thing about these things too and i got this idea from uh, uh michael todd putnam and his awesome builds on his uh, channel is you can actually lay other builds on top of these because they're some of them they're varied heights but you get enough so you can lay stuff so you could do elevated builds with these i didn't do that with this one but it's definitely something i want to do in the future I, I like that looks really cool and anytime you can start making things a little bit more three-dimensional than just flat it adds a lot uh a lot to your encounters um like i said this piece just big piece of insulation foam uh all the rock back there uh, is again more of those molds some of it is carved like these things here i carved those out of insulation foam this is an old piece. I don't think I've ever used this until now, and I don't quite remember why I built it. I think I needed an entrance to a temple or something. And uh, just insulation foam, different types, paint it up, put some construction paper on there to kind of give it a border. And those uh, eyelets are uh, 
I think they're for jewelry. Pretty sure, yeah. There's something for jewelry. I get them at like Michael's Craft Store, but I'd never used that until now. Worked out pretty good. Um, this piece here, this is from Games Workshop. Whoops. Um, this is from Games Workshop. This is part of one of their Warcry uh, box sets. And I have it. I just don't remember the name of it because I, I don't play Warcry. Uh, I just, I like some of the miniatures and the terrain. I have a, it came with a bunch of this stuff. This is the only thing I've painted so far. I need to put the rest of it together and, and uh, get it painted. Because it worked good for like, scaffolding or representing the mining of this area here, which was going on in this pit. Which, that's why that's painted black, is because um, it's supposed to represent a pit. Um, these miniatures, all these dwarf miniatures, these are uh, used as my Durga. And the lighting's a little weird, but these are from Cyborg Miniatures, and they're really cool. They're like evil dwarves, and I saw these, and these were kind of the inspiration for me designing my own version of the Durga, who are a bunch of uh, bloodthirsty savages that are actually cannibals, too. Um, very much uh, darker and grimmer than the standard uh, D&D ones, but I have a bunch of these. I have some more. Uh, a few more that I got to paint, and I actually might, or my friends and players watch this video, might have actually ordered some more to add to the collection in case we go back to the Underdark, which I hope we do. Um, these miniatures here, I don't remember. This might be a Reaper miniature. I have some other ones here that I know aren't Reaper miniatures. They're actually from Otherworld Miniatures, which is another great miniatures company, especially if you're looking stuff for monsters and miniatures that were inspired from the ad and d monster manual it's like literally pulled them off a page and made miniatures out of them they look great um, i use their stuff i'm not uh a miniature snob i like to uh, a lot of different companies make great miniatures and i like to use all of them uh these little things here this cage this is dwarven forge just from the dungeons of doom i have a bunch of that i have the entire dungeon of doom um kick uh set from Dwarven Forge. It took me a long time to finish it, but I eventually got the entire thing after back in the initial Kickstarter. Um, these things, these little LED lights are really neat, and they're from this company here. I don't know if I can get this in focus. Right there. And they're on Etsy. I bought a, a fair amount of stuff from them. Great, great stuff. Not super expensive. Um, really good customer service. My last order, I ordered a couple more lights, I think, and some other stuff. And I didn't think the order was running late, but they did and sent me a message that they were sending me some, uh, a free thing to go with my order because they, they felt the order should have been out sooner than it was. I didn't have any problem with it, but hey, that's really good customer service and I'll definitely buy some more stuff off of them. Um, yeah, so this is, this was it. This is their foray into the Underdark. Dor Naroth, as I named it, the Dooming Deep. Um, you may see this piece, these pieces in later videos and other sessions. I may repaint them and give them a above ground, uh, uh, painting style, you know, scheme. I'm not sure, but, uh, they definitely work good for the session that, uh, I just ran. And thanks for watching.